Tena koto, tena koto, tena koto katoa. It is great to be able to gather online this year and continue our conversations around work integrated learning and how to support students when they are conducting such activities. My name is Christina Höppner and I work for Catalyst IT in Wellington. We do have offices in other locations in both Aotearoa and abroad, where we support our clients with open source solutions to a diverse range of business requirements. I focus on learning and professional development as the project lead of the ePortfolio platform Mahara. The project is going to celebrate its 15th anniversary later this year, and we see increasing use outside formal education in the world of work, for example, for accreditation and certification purposes. Today, I would like to bring the topic of digital ethics to your attention and introduce you to the work of ABLE. ABLE is the association of authentic, experiential and experience-based learning, a US-based but internationally operating association that promotes the use of ePortfolios. It set up a task force on the topic of digital ethics in 2019 because it is an important topic when asking learners to create portfolios. The result from the first year of investigation, which concluded last year, is a set of 10 principles that we'll take a closer look at. In September 2020, we entered the second year of the task force and are investigating three principles more closely, and those are diversity, equity, inclusion, belonging and decolonization, visibility of labor and evaluation. Each principle follows a common structure for consistency. It includes the principle itself, an abstract, several strategies that you and your students can use successfully to adhere to the principle, scenarios that exemplify how you might encounter it, and references. While we are still working on this year's principle, the first 10 are already published and you can access them via the link tinyurl.com slash digital dash ethics dash zero one. In order to look at the individual principles, let's imagine one of your world students is on placement in an ECE center in your town. They are an outgoing student, love to take photos and short videos on their smartphone and share them on their social media accounts as they like to stay connected with their friends. It is their first placement and they are keen to get started but still have a lot of questions. That is where principle one, support, comes in. I think we can all agree that it is vital that portfolio initiatives are supported in order to make them a success. The support does not have to come just from you as lecturers in the wider department, but should also involve others like the library, the writing center and the office of accessibility, just to name a few. Our will student knows to whom they can reach out and when they have questions about their portfolio work. Their portfolio is also scaffolded to help them get started. Now with principle to promote awareness, um, we cannot assume that students know about digital ethics when they start their portfolio journey. Instead, lecturers and staff are responsible to make students aware and help them navigate the space by providing examples and teaching about copyright amongst others. Our will student is made aware that they cannot take pictures of their students without parental consent and know what other options there are to capture their work visually. Principle three, practice. Practice takes you to mastery and so also in the portfolio space. In the beginning, it may be difficult for students to select the best appropriate evidence, reflect or give constructive feedback. With enough practice, they will become more comfortable with it though. Our will student realizes that they don't need to upload all their pictures and reflections into their portfolio, but that they should pick the ones that illustrate their learning best. 
they can keep the other evidence for a different portfolio if they like. Principle four, respect author rights and reuse permissions. That applies to portfolios, no matter whether they are shared publicly or privately. A platform can support portfolio creators by making it easy to attach a license to a piece of evidence that learners don't need to keep separate records. Our Will student wants to include some promotional material from the ECE Center in their portfolio and thus checks with a colleague who created the flyer whether that is allowed and how they should credit the center. Principle 5. Access to technology. Be mindful what devices are required for students to access the portfolio and ensure that students who do not own an appropriate device themselves can have one available through your institution. It also means having support available to handle the technology well. Our Will student has a smartphone and uses that primarily in the ECE Center as having a laptop around would not work well. Therefore, they checked out the platform beforehand and explored how they can access their portfolio and update it. The lecturer had provided a handy resource outlining the main functionalities that the students would need on their placement. Principle six, privacy. Portfolio authors should always have the right to decide with whom they want to share their portfolio. Our Will student learns that sharing everything publicly might not always be possible, for example, when they are reflecting on activities with children and want to include visual evidence. While they learned to anonymize their evidence, they want to keep their reflections in a private space and only share them with their placement tutor. Principle seven, content storage. This principle highlights the right of authors to ask where their data is stored and who has access to it. It touches on the responsibility of authors to know what they are agreeing to when they accept the terms and conditions and privacy statement. Our student knows that both private and public portfolios are stored in our Aotearoa and thus knows how their privacy is respected. They know that their data doesn't go overseas and is not mined by companies and then that the data is sold to others. Working with children very closely, they realize how vulnerable they are in a world where content can be shared so easily and where it can be hard to know where a picture ends up. Principle eight, cross-platform compatibility. While it should be a given today that portfolio platforms work across multiple devices, this principle does need to be taken into consideration when an institution reviews the implementation of a particular platform to choose one that can be used by everyone. Our Will student doesn't have to worry about needing a particular device to create and update their portfolio as their tertiary institution made sure that it works on any computer and mobile device to give students the flexibility and the options to work with their preferred technology. Principle nine, accessibility. Accessibility is a constantly evolving area. In Aotearoa, for example, one in four people have a permanent disability. Unfortunately, our Will student had a bike accident halfway through their placement and broke their left wrist, preventing them from using their phone easily or a mouse, as their left hand is their dominant one. So they had a temporary disability. They needed to switch to using a computer and could still navigate their ePortfolio site because it could be navigated fully by keyboard and they used their phone's voice recorder to speak their reflections and then upload them to the portfolio. Principle 10, consent for data usage. An institution should know how and where their data is stored and that that storage complies with institutional policies. Our Will student is aware that certain social media platforms where they may upload videos have different data usage rights 
than their portfolio platform and decide to store videos that should stay private directly in the portfolio platform rather than publicly online to restrict its use. Now, these were the 10 principles from the first year of investigation into digital ethics and portfolios. But our work didn't stop there. Since September last year, 2020, we've been looking into other themes that are complex in nature. Since we're still working on them, they don't yet have a number because their order might still change. One of the big themes this year is uh, diversity, equity, inclusion, belonging and decolonization. Conversations around this theme are incredibly important and it is the responsibility of lecturers and tutors to provide safe environments where students can express themselves and their cultural beliefs in their portfolios, making them feel welcome and encouraged to participate. Our Will student experienced such a welcoming atmosphere during the first session when the portfolio component was introduced to the class. Their tutors shared their inclusive teaching philosophy with them and through activities, the students got to know each other and their tutor and started establishing a trusted relationship that was reinforced through additional activities throughout the placement. The next principle, visibility of labor, recognizes that developing, implementing, creating, supporting and assessing portfolios is labor intense and should be compensated where appropriate and for portfolio authors to be taken into consideration when giving portfolio assignments. They are not done quickly, but can take a considerable amount of time to create. Our Will student knows that they cannot create their portfolio just an hour before it is due for their assignment. They have dedicated time each week to work on their portfolio and reflect on their ECE work. After four weeks, they take stock and realize what skills they have learned already through creating their portfolio and to update their CV accordingly with these new skills. Last but not least, portfolio evaluation is also a principle. It considers the process, inclusion, reflective practice, and alignment with objectives and outcomes of the portfolio work. From the start, our Will student knew what the evaluation criteria were for their portfolio and how it fit into the overall Will experience, which is a required class at their tertiary institution. Now, having learned about these 13 digital ethics principles, you may wish to take a step back and connect the dots between them. None of these principles stand on their own, but they are all connected and intertwined and inform each other. By making them explicit, we want to give educators, portfolio authors, administrators, and also platform providers some guidance on hand to take into consideration when undergoing portfolio work to make it a practice that benefits the learners and respects and protects people who directly or indirectly contribute to the portfolio. So now it's time for you to get active. What is the biggest digital ethics portfolio question you have right now at your institution? I look forward to our conversation.